Hello and welcome back to another guide for Xenonauts 2. My name is Saiken and today we're going to take a look into the ultimate guide to squad compositions and soldiers, everything that you need to know around that. The guides are concise, accurate and 10 minutes or less. No bullshit, no repetition, really just the information that you need. So let's dive right into it. All right, let's start with soldiers first before we go into squad compositions and let's take a look at what you will see when you are starting the game. So this is the typical kind of array of uh, soldiers that you will see when you're starting the game. It might be a little bit overwhelming, so let's go through the stats first and then uh, talk about how you want to build up your roster in general. So. You do have six stats. All of these stats generally can progress with so-called progress points. So whenever a soldier either does something related to those stats or whenever a soldier continues to train in the training center, you will get progress points. You will need a certain amount of progress point per stat to then increase it by one. Every stat starts at a certain level and can reach up to a maximum of 100. Uh, the maximum soldier is potentially a colonel soldier with 100 in all stats. Let's talk about the stats and which ones are difficult and uh, more more difficult to raise than others. So, health um, implies the hit points that your soldier has. It's an ultra important stat because a dead soldier is a soldier that can no longer continue to fight. I cannot stress enough that the way that damage works in Xenonauts 2, every single weapon has a base damage and deals between 50 and 200% of that damage, which means even the absolute mook enemy with a pistol that deals 20 points of damage could hit you for 40 points. And listen, Alex Nicoli, for instance, here would already uh, be killed by that. The moment that you drop to zero hit points, the only chance that you survive it is the 25% uh, chance uh, on the uh, medical center roll on the highest difficulty. And other than that, your soldier is just gone. It's a very meat grindery game. Hit points, super important and also relatively slow to race. You need to take damage in battle, which you tendentially don't want to do in order to race the stat. So this one here will grow slowly, which means we want soldiers with a high amount of hit points. Time units. Time units is how far your soldier can move and uh, a percentage of the time units are taken for any forms of shots. Make mo no mistake though, since it's always percentage based, more time units do not automatically help you to shoot more often, quite the opposite. You want high time units on uh, soldiers that need to walk far, but it is a step that grows relatively soon or quick. And I wouldn't stress it too much if they don't have a lot of time units. Accuracy, important, but not as important as you might think. In a typical uh, XCOM fashion, accuracy determines the chance of hitting the aliens. Every single type of shot, quick shot, aim shot, uh, um, salvo, will have a certain modifier um, between 50% and 130% on the accuracy. So say if someone has 50 accuracy, um, then a aim shot would have a 65% chance of hitting the enemy bar any um, interfering objects, cover and so on and so forth. Which means you want a high amount of accuracy to hit more often. High accuracy is typically for soldiers like snipers or backline soldiers, but a low accuracy is not an automatic disqualification as you can give the soldier grenades and other tools to basically not suffer accuracy. Strengths. Um, moderately important um, accuracy also uh, rises quite fast so you don't need a lot at the beginning strength an okay important set but not the main uh, set high strength means you can carry more that is important specifically for heavies and and, uh, and uh, shield bearers because they need to carry a lot of weight uh, you typically end up with soldiers with high strengths and kind of moderate accuracy, kind of uh, Chen Hilan here is an example. So that would be an archetype for a soldier that you want to equip with a shield because they can move okay far. Uh, they don't need a lot of accuracy and they will just use the shield to be a defensive tank and then throw grenades. It also de uh, determines how far you can throw items. So high strength is good for that. But like I said, it's an okay stat. The most important ones are hit points and bravery, followed by accuracy and, the, um, and reflex. And strengths and time units are potentially the least important, so I give them okay. 
Reflex um, important. The way that it works is number of time units that you do have uh, left over uh, multiplied by your reflex gives a percent chance by, for every movement uh, that an enemy does in order to take a shot which means if you leave someone with full time units they do have a relatively high chance of at least shooting once and then uh, consecutive shots might happen but depending on how much the enemy moves or actually acts uh, there might not be any further overwatch overwatch always takes um, all of the time units that um, have been left but will deduct time units from your next turn as well so you won't be starting with full time units automatically it does not always do that i haven't fully figured out when it does it and when it doesn't do that but keep in mind um, overwatch is not the end all solution for everything if you even if you have a high reflex reflex um, is a moderately increasing stat i wouldn't sweat it too much for me it's just one of the stats that um, is fine to have but not absolutely necessary bravery on the other hand is a super important stat bravery determines two things number one your con um, your um, defense against mind controls mesmerization and so on and so forth and you want to be spot on with that not many enemies do have special attacks i will say that so it's way way less than an xcom or in other games but it also determines your ability to not um, piss your pants and actually start to panic so bravery uh, moves up slow and i would uh, potentially give it a high importance if i had to rank the stats hit points and bravery high reflex and accuracy moderately strength and time unit low so what are we now going to do and when we're beginning to fill out a roster i look for low bravery low hit point um, uh, soldiers captain alex necoli uh, thank you but we don't need someone who uh, fails in both of these categories. Thanks, but no thanks. Continuing with bravery and seeing a 38 right here, uh, and we're dismissing it right, uh, right away. Typically, 50 is kind of the core balanced soldier. Not all of them are um, statted equally. You can see Daniel Solokov, for instance, has definitely in some more points than, than other soldiers. However, you can see uh, that some are more unequally distributed uh, than others. So I would do the same with hit points. 40 hit points, pretty low, but very high bravery. So that's actually good. 42 hit points, still very low. Uh, so I will then go further and look at the accuracy. 49, not really great. So um, we're going to potentially, this one here is on the edge. I'm not sure if they would survive. Um, they make a really good uh, rifleman because they do have moderate accuracy but high reflexes and they don't uh, panic as fast. But 40 hit points is really pushing it. That that might be a little bit uh, too little. So we're currently having um, overall, um, overall 10 soldiers. We want to get at least two or three more. And the way that I would do that is at the market, just look at uh, what is available, right? And we do have a couple of soldiers that might come into play. So for starters, uh, one of uh, the stats that I like at the beginning of the game to look at is high accuracy snipers. Accuracy um, 67 is great. So Liang Rouge um, with uh, an okay bravery and okay hit points definitely qualifies. Um, Hannah here has a little bit uh, sh too little bravery for my taste. We definitely do have a keeper here with Alice Parker. Uh, decent accuracy, good stats in those two. And um, Bradley Parker, good stats all around. Seems like a decent addition to the team as well. I'm looking for high hit point targets and am going to find... Uh, Vilda here, not bad, has good strengths, has okay bravery, so we might want to get her as well. So that makes us out our living uh, capacity. We hire four soldiers. Those will come in and we'll, uh, we'll be here in two days. But in the meantime, we can already start equipping and doing the squad composition. You will see that, to just finish up uh, the soldiers, you will see that uh, the soldiers will also rise in ranks. The higher the rank, they get a hidden bravery bonus to all of the 
um, soldiers in the team. On colonel level it is plus 20, which means if you do have a colonel in your team, everybody else has effectively 20 more bravery, which is good, so less panic. What we currently have is an okay roster. You do have your yeah, little uh, low stats here and there, but it's actually a fine uh, roster to start the game, specifically if the new privates are coming in. You anyways will rotate over time as people get injured, others will come in. And one last word around training. You want to make sure that you do have as much training capacity in months two as possible. Keep in mind, we now have 14 soldiers. One thing that I would say is get at least 10 training capacity better um, uh, the second training facility because that's free stats for all of your soldiers. Moving on to squad composition. When we start with the squad composition, I tend to like to start right here on the overview screen so that we can fill the roles. Let's first of all talk about the different roles and what I think about them. There are presets, but the presets are just fol uh, following certain core roles that they are doing. Sniper is your backline high accuracy targeter that deals damage. Sniper rifles are the only weapon that do not have a drop off of accuracy over range. And as long as you don't exceed the maximum range, sniper can hit basically anywhere. You want a free line of sight and then the sniper can, uh, can hit. Shields are the exact opposite. You're going very close to the enemy. Shields start with 80 hit points um, and basically protect the wearer in the front um, 45 degrees angle to the left and uh, to the right so at the 90 degrees angle uh, the vision range of the soldier is where the shield protects they can just raise it and the damage will first go into the shield and once the shield is broken basically the character uh, is left with whatever else uh, they are carrying shield uh, carriers are frontline characters Rifleman and Assault I would put together, the one I using uh, Assault Rifles, the other are using Shotguns, are basically the frontline uh, soldiers with a lot of movement that can flank, that can uh, take a couple of uh, shots and that will fire support in the frontline. Grenadier as a role is uh, strictly for cover removal or for vision denial. The grenade launcher is a very strong weapon but it requires a certain setup. Uh, generally, the um, Grenadier will be used in order to remove most of the cover that is in the way, as they can fire two, later even three grenades per round, in order to just empty the battlefield and void it of anything that is interfering. And finally, the heavies, which I would uh, most classify as, as actual medium ranged infantry, uh, that will take a lot of uh, action points to fire their gun, but they can burst fire and they can full auto fire, both of uh, which is helpful to suppress enemies and they deal a lot of damage. So, how would I now structure that team? Easy. We're going to start with accuracy um, and we're going to do the following. First of all, we're ordering and everybody uh, takes a standard role of a rifleman. That's kind of the fallback position. In terms of a squad composition, what you would what you would want uh, to do is you would want, in my perspective, to have two backline characters, so two snipers. You want to have two frontline characters, so shield bearers. That already takes four out of nine characters for those two vital roles. You want to have one character that can remove cover and is specialized in that. I take uh, the Grenadier for that. And then you're left with four characters, which I typically uh, separate into two mid-ranged and two frontline characters. So that could be two heavies and two riflemen. So a good squad, in my perspective, is a balanced one, as it will be able to overcome most of the challenges. You will want to have frontline in order to tank some of the damage. This game is ultra level and the shields will help you to overcome that to a degree, but you don't want to put too much uh, into it because every single shield bearer typically also uh, deals less damage. So two shield bearers, two riflemen, one grenadier, two heavies, two snipers is the setup. In order to get to that setup, we're starting with the highest accuracy and the highest accuracy here would be Dillian Solokov, who becomes the sniper and the second highest accuracy is actually tied. 
and if you do have such a tight um, accuracy I'm looking at other stats in this case um, Hu Xiangsu has a really low strength so we're going to make them a sniper as well typically not requiring as much carry weight as other classes good now that we do have the snipers out of the way let's take a look at strength strength is coming next you want a high strength uh, for the shield bearing characters um, and a low accuracy if um, if possible so um, let's take a look here lowest accuracy uh, Chen Xin Li um, would make a perfect shield bearer number one because you don't want them on a gun and you actually want them uh, somewhere else so op optimally I would take the lowest uh, accuracy with moderate strengths uh, Ki Kimiko here is not really a great addition to the team do we have someone else you know what let's get that uh, that one going so lowest accuracy shield and next lowest accuracy here has a really good strength we're going to take a second shield cool now we already do have two shields and we do have two snipers next up we're looking for high strength and high strength is important to manage recoil what we're looking for is an actual good strength and good accuracy so these guys here would be perfect but they are not yet here which means we're taking kind of moderate accuracy high strength and making this guy the first heavy as they need to deal with the recoil we do have another good strength good accuracy so that for me is another heavy which now brings us to yet again strength uh, because the granite launcher is typically a heavy weapon and we want to see if there is still someone with a decent strength left over i think 57 is okay uh, also from oh wait um no 57 is okay also from the remaining soldiers that we do have available they have the lowest aim so we're making them the grenadier now let's take a look we got shield uh shield Sniper, Sniper, Rifleman, Rifleman, Heavy, Heavy, and a Grenadier. Let's move to equipment up of each of the characters. And this is where the rubber hits the road, because now, for starters, you want to uh, rearrange your characters. The way that I'm personally doing it is two shields to the front, followed by two Riflemen, because they are going to be going out of uh, the adventure first, followed by a Grenadier, followed by two heavies followed by two snipers it's basically front uh, front to back so you can see carry weight is uh, going to be determined by strength and will be ultra important at the beginning we do have a limited set of defender armor it is one of the things that i tend to um, build right away at the beginning um, so for the remaining money that we do have available let's just get defender armor should speak about that as well armor in my perspective is the most important value of all of the values that you see here armor will determine how much uh, damage is deducted from every single shot and you want to maximize the survivability of your um, operatives and i cannot stress that enough if you don't have a great armor value, you can expect that your operatives will be a one-shot and simply die. Um, short of the combat shields, which do have 80 health, but also weigh quite a bit. So, what are we going to do with the shields? Let's uh, start to build it up. I will just do one of each uh, of the roles exemplarily to show you how it's done, and you can then uh, apply it. So, I like very concrete roles for each of them shield bearers are there to soak up damage but also to remove cover so what we're going to do is we're starting with the shield which is clearly the most important uh, option uh, we can then either have a ballistic pistol which is really a close ranged weapon with a lot of shots or alternatively the combat knife i personally would simply go with a pistol and just call it a day it's not a great option but it is okay for what it's supposed to do typically once you 
um, lose the shield, the character has a lot of problems. And one way of dealing with those problems is to simply put a sniper uh, into the backpack. At the beginning, that will cause a huge carry weight problem, but you can drop that sniper on the ground at the beginning only costs you two or three time units and then it just stays there so the moment that you lose your shield you just run back and grab the sniper and have more backline support everything else that you are seeing out of my experience should go into gr uh, grenades a setup that i would run at the beginning would be potentially something along the lines of two demo charges and a flashbang the demo charges are important to remove cover and you won't have enough time units just with your grenadier to remove all of the cover so this one here is helpful also they deal a decent amount of thermal damage and reduce armor so what you can do is use that as an opener for enemies that are standing behind cover uh, and hit them with it as well will destroy their armor and then you just finish them up secondly one flashbang grenade enemies that are flashbang will get suppressed the moment that an enemy is suppressed they cannot do overwatch shots so if you're rushing into a confined room you're just throwing in that flashbang to make sure that you're not taking any unnecessary shots make no mistake at the end of your turn though the suppression ends and then uh, the enemies connect so that would be a standard um, loadout uh, for a shield bearer at the beginning simply Due to the fact that they don't have enough carry weight, I am not taking anything else in there. The once I have finished the standard loadout, which already uh, costs them a certain amount of time units, I would then put a sniper in there for them to drop. Moving on to Rifleman. Rifleman, in my perspective, the same ordeal. We're going to go with Defender Armor, absolutely necessary. And let's clean out the non-important stuff. Riflemen uh, do have the option between ballistic rifles and shotguns. In my perspective, shotguns are much worse than rifles, mainly because you don't want to be close to the enemy to begin with. So rifles are better in many, many regards. So I would um, always opt for two rifles. As a secondary, I would give them a medkit. They are typically fast and you need the medkits in order to heal up bleeding wounds. So no question there. That's kind of the standard layout. Upgrade the armor, don't uh, think about it twice, and always start with a tactical module. Now, what I like to do at the beginning is continue to upgrade the armor a little bit further, uh, depending on the carry weight. If they don't have that, skip it so that you're, uh, you're um, essentially going in with 12 armor instead of 15 then. And then um, the rest, I would uh, either use a demo charge and as and when time uh, permits later, I would give them another flashbang uh, grenade. In terms of ammunition, my experience is one clip, more than enough uh, for the beginning. So that's a standard loadout for riflemen. Grenadier, same thing, defender armor, personally. I'm torn whether or not you even want to go with that uh, offhand weapon. What you could do with them is a similar case um, of what we've discussed earlier. You want to maximize the amount of grenades that you do have for cover removal, right? So they will be the biggest um, problem child when it comes to carry weight as each of the grenades costs uh, 12 uh, weight, no 16 actually. So that could be a standard loadout for the beginning. You could then go as far as to say, I'm putting this in and dropping it on the ground until such time when we have exhausted the grenade launcher and then we're going to switch around. Now, this here has a bit of a downside because you cannot really react. This could be a more compromising build, um, uh, as in not compromising, as in a more compromised build where you do have a offhand weapon that at least can do overwatch shots. So that could be something that you could run. As carry weight goes up, you can run more. Heavies, same thing, very much um, carry weight dependent um, class. So a couple of things here. I would always start with a tactical module, that is important. I would only go with one set of am uh, ammunition, even arguably no ammunition. I would skip the pistol. In my perspective, it's more important to have two further medics 
to not always run out of a situation where kind of the riflemen are somewhere else. You want medics. This will make sure that your troops are surviving more and more. Now, in this case, we have used high strength characters, so you can put more armor in. They will be the ones that soak up the armor. And then you just put one charge for um, cover removal later with laser weapons. They automatically remove um, cover, so that goes away and you can put more grenades in. So that'll be a standard loadout for heavy. And finally, a sniper. And we're seeing these guys are the ones with low strength. So um, you can already see that the standard loadout is quite problematic for them. Um, I would rather skip the secondary weapon than the armor. I'd be honest, I would rather go with the armor. Snipers at the beginning can be quite um, hungry when it comes to ammunition. So I would put enough ammunition in. If they do have enough uh, carry weight, you can put another weapon in there. Um, the other option of how you can run it uh, which I also appreciate is um, using uh, smoke grenades. So having the sm snipers on smoke grenades can actually help you uh, because smoke grenades are very, very good and are reducing the vision side of uh, the enemy. So that's really potentially a bit more in-depth uh, setup of the team. But with that setup of shield, rifleman, grenadier, heavy and sniper, you do have a good a very very good um, setup for a starting team that will make it easy for you to fulfill their current roles shields and grenadiers are cover removal shield is tank uh, is tanking the riflemen are fire support and will heal if needed the heavies are the real damage dealers and suppressors from the back snipers will be used in order to take out individual targets so you do have four uh, killing um, uh, targets two kind of fire support targets that can also kill and three support targets which is kind of a six uh, to three so two thirds one thirds rule i really like that setup and it has grown on me so i would um, urge you to give it a try and see if it works for you which brings us to the end of today's episode thank you for uh, listening through all of it i hope it was informative for you and see you in the next guide i have quite a few xenonaut 2 guides if you're interested take care and bye bye